the federal transportation funds in trouble too. Funding's been extended for the holiday just until next Friday, giving Congress only days to cut a long-term deal. The House of Representatives' current deal cuts millions from state highway funds and $50 million from NJ Transit and contains no funding for the new Gateway train tunnel under the Hudson. I asked the Senate Mass Transit Subcommittee's ranking Democrat, Senator Bob Menendez, where the House and Senate transportation bills stand. Well, this is the large federal transportation bill that is so critical to New Jersey as a corridor state, where mass transit is a big part of our economic vitality, cross borders. And so what's, what the bill is about is trying to reconcile a more robust transportation bill, because it's a five-year bill, but right now only has three years of funding, which means at the end of the three years we'll be back in the same boat. And it's hard to plan long-term projects like Gateway, the Trans-Hudson Tunnel, in three years. And so we are in negotiations to build it up, uh, to have it more robustly funded, and to include some provisions that the Senate passed that are important to New Jersey, like a high-density state that the House took out. And that's what our and, challenge and is. And what the high-density state the House took out means is a loss of $50 million to NJ Transit. Absolutely, which NJ Transit cannot afford, and New Jersey Transit riders cannot afford. If we take and, a hit And like if you that, take $50 million out, how do we ever get to the type of money we need for Gateway? gateway. You know? That's my question. How do we get to the money for Gateway? Well, this is going to have to be, when I uh, passed the last uh, federal highway bill, we had provisions for projects of national or regional significance. Well, we generate about 20% of GDP for the entire nation out of our region. This has to be a project of national significance, and we have to get the funding necessary in that category to make sure that we can start our way and have a long-term commitment to Gateway. The government, the federal government, has said they'll match 50 percent, uh, and that's great. But saying that and having the money to do it is two different things. I'm working to try to make sure that the money's there. Do you think you can do it, given that the, both houses are controlled by Republicans? Well, as I said, this has to be one in which the administration, the Obama administration, uses its muscle in its ability to negotiate with the Congress to make this a project of national significance. If we make this a project of national significance, which it is, I mean, this is a corridor region. Right. This but is does uh, this the throw Amtrak the agreement? goes to this region. So this is about the nation's economy. It's about the nation's security in a post-September 11th world. Uh, and it is about growth and economic opportunity. Does this throw the agreement that the Obama administration made with both Governor Cuomo in New York and Governor Christie in New Jersey to go halvesies on the funding for Gateway? If we, if we take that kind of a cut, can we do it? Well, that commitment's going to stay. Now, the question is, you've got to put the funds into the commitment, right? So that won't be done necessarily in one bill alone. And there are a series of other pots that we will draw from. But at the end of the day, it starts with a robust federal highway and mass transit bill to lay the foundation for the type of funding that the federal government has to come up with 50%. And then the state which has challenges with its transportation trust fund is going to have to put its house in order as well. And fast. And fast. The foreclosure crisis. You've introduced a bill that would help people stay in their homes longer and transfer some of the responsibility to the mortgage servicers. Can you tell us how that would work? Well, we have the highest rate of foreclosure in the nation here in New Jersey. We have more zombie foreclosures than any other part of the country, which means that a bank or a mortgage company starts a foreclosure. The owner says, well, I don't have the wherewithal to pay for it, walks away from the property, and then the bank changes their mind. It doesn't finish their foreclosure because the value isn't big enough. This is just bad. So the property sits derelict and sits abandoned. Sits derelict creates an, uh, a tremendous challenge for the community, property values go down, and the family's out of their home. So principal reduction, which is being done in the private sector, uh, where you reduce the principal of the debt, you take a future interest in any appreciation in the value, lets the homeowner stay, be a responsible borrower, keep the property values intact, keep families in their home, is something I want to see that the Fannie and Freddie and FHA do. They are prohibited under federal law to do so. This is working in the pri private sector. Aquin is doing it. 80% of the people they offer to it take it, and there's less than 3% default. So this is a proven success rate. We just need to let Fannie 
Fannie, Freddie, and FHA do the same. Keep more families in, keep property values stable, build our communities. Thank you, Senator. Thank you.